do something different. I'm going to do two things. I got this little sort of great circle of light, six degrees of separation thing I have to do. Um, and it's not six, it's like two or three maybe. In this room it's one or two. So 34 years ago, uh, I graduated from college and I moved to Boston. And Miles Rappaport was actually my first employer. Uh, I showed up at this little organization called Massachusetts Fair Share. And Miles was the, uh, Miles was the head of some, uh, Boston Fair Share, which is part of Massachusetts Fair Share. And I had no idea what I was doing. And so they said, well, here's your job. They gave me a little uh, chain. And they said, you go out in that street corner, Leverett Circle, for folks in Boston. You go out in Leverett Circle and you collect money. And you tell people that we're trying to reduce auto insurance rates. And whatever you collect, you get half of it. <laughs> so I went to the playoff in the corner. It was like 97 degrees, hot summer hot day in Boston. And Leverett said, the car's not here, that no one's paying attention to looking. And I go to this corner, and there's this guy there. And it's a corner he works. And, you know, he's a, a, a you know, guy who's down on his luck, and he's panhandling. And, and he's like pissed off because I'm like on his corner. So we start talking a bit, and I ask him like, what's his deal? And he says, well, what do you mean, what's my deal? I said, well, I shake this can and I get half. He said, well, I shake my can and I get all of it. <laughs> and I'm like, what is the matter with this, what's the matter with this picture? So I left fair share and went to work for a union. <laughs> Shakers or anyone else only get a fair deal from the boss that they get. <laughs> so I appreciate the education, Miles. <laughs> that was good. You got me the right start, and I went to work with the SEIU. Um, and, uh, and I learned a lot from that. And I took this sort of twisty road and, and I found myself eventually helping to participate in the, in the restructure of the auto business. And I just want to say one thing about that. Again, I, I won't try to say everything Bob said because he said it way well. But, 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 but I do think it is worth pausing for a minute on, on that event and kind of what it means. Um, and obviously, uh, just like Bob got a lot of applause because there are a lot of folks in the room that think this is Bob and their paycheck. Um, <laughs> and that's okay. So in almost exactly 24 months ago, um, he was faced with a very difficult decision. Uh, I was saying to Bob earlier that at the time the president decided, and, and I think the decision regarding price in particular was really the decision that tells us a little bit about the guy. Um, at the time of the price decision, which was the 1st of May, so 25 months ago, um, the polls actually said we shouldn't do this. The polls in Michigan actually said we shouldn't do this. This was 60-40 against the Michigan. Um, it's a little bit different now, but it was 60-40 against Michigan, and it was kind of 70-30 against the balance of the country. Um, and there were a lot of people who said that uh, there were reasons, like one of them falling down. Um, there are a lot of people who said that we shouldn't do it, and, and they were not all people of ill will. Uh, not absolutely all. Um, there were people who said we ought not to do it. But what the president decided was that the, the damage to the families, to the communities, and to the way of life that is the automobile industry, and the automobile industry I think as a, as a kind of a symbol for American manufacturing generally, was just not something that he wanted to let go. This was actually a hard decision because careful, thoughtful financial analysis would have told you that the odds of Chrysler surviving were 50-50-ish. Um, but he decided to make a bet. And it was a bet that came from his heart because he just wasn't willing to be the guy who said that Chrysler couldn't live anymore. And he turned it over to the UAW and to the management um, and they have made this company, they have brought this company back to life. 
last week, uh, two weeks ago, Chrysler repaid all of the money that they borrowed from the stock we own to, to fiat, and when the arithmetic is coded up, the, the economics of that deal will candidly be trivial uh, in terms of compared to what was saved. But, but I think it really does tell you something about, about what he's made of, because it is, it is moments like that where it's not obvious, where it really does rely on, on what you believe and what you have faith in um, that kind of tell you who you are. So look, these are, these are hard times. That doesn't spend any time in America. These are hard times, um, but I think the, the fundamental spirit that, that animates the folks in this room is the same spirit that animates the guy who, who lives in the nice house in Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, and I think we ought to think about that. So thank you.